Here is Dave's Juno 106 powered up with its panel board reinserted and I'm finding some interesting stuff going on uh, even without these sliders installed and I haven't seen this kind of thing before. If I select a patch, did you see that? Something edited. And as time goes by, those edits continue to happen. I can hear the sound changing. And what's interesting to note is that uh, going on is the missing faders are essentially, uh, because they're not there, these signals aren't being tied down to ground and consequently uh, this is actually being perceived as sort of a, depending on what's going on elsewhere electrically, these can be accidentally, uh, phantom faders could actually be uh, sending a uh, sort of a, a spurious signal which then gets interpreted as an edit. Because it would make sense, the attack decay is being affected, the keyboard tracking is being affected, and the LFO is being affected. So I'm actually just going to run back, throw those replacement sliders in, and then come back here and we'll test it again. And there's no need for you guys to see all that, you know what it looks like. So I'm just going to go solder those in, I'll be right back. Well, here it is. Uh, basically, I put in all of the faders and um, that the mystery effect... Turn the volume here. Crackly. No more bulky tax switches. <laughs> Sounds like a lover boy patch, that one. Okay, so, um, just to verify that these sliders are working, uh, I'm going to see if, just by cranking it, I can engage the LEDs. There. Yeah. Right. Yes. 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 See, basically, I'm, I'm resetting the preset. Uh, and then I am making a switch edit. Very nice. To verify that all of these guys are in fact checking in. Okay, yeah, um, looking good. And of course, Yeah. Sounds like an old video game or something. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm uh, <clears throat> getting out of. Oh, 
Okay, having too much fun. Well, it looks to me like we have ourselves a completely reconditioned panel board. No bulky switches and no crazy faders. So we'll um, take this back uh, to the office and we'll verify 100% using the editor with its ability to report things like crazy fader jumps and that sort of thing. But I think, uh, I think we're good to go here with this. Next step is where we're going to go next. Um, we do want to get this guy back in. But before we can get him back in, he needs new neoprene dust covers. And on the subject of neoprene dust covers, we have the bender block over here. The bender block has its own faders that need reconditioning, and it has its own neoprene dust covers that need replacing. So, <clears throat> what the next step would be after we verify that this is all good, is to pull out the bender block, disassemble it, get that PCB out, and recondition these um, slots. Hey! There's no slider here. I just noticed that. We're missing a slider. Oh no! That's okay. I have some of these very, very sliders uh, up my sleeve. Again, from, you know, the part lots that I purchased online. So, I, we should be able to replace this for Dave. And it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, so um, that's where we're going to head from here. But the next time you see us, we'll be testing this guy using Visor Juno 106. Okay, I was wrong. Uh, what we need to do now is actually, I've already done it, but I put all of the, the keycaps, button caps, back in place. And uh, I don't know if you noticed it when the board was bare, but there are little markings on it which actually say which color and which cluster size goes where. So they just pop right back in place. And I went over each and every one of them with a Q-tip, uh, flattened out to get inside this crevice in here with some IPA, just to get rid of, you know, accumulated groat which wasn't very good because these are beautiful buttons and I wanted them absolutely clean. And now that they are absolutely clean, they look really good. So well, I'm just going to slide the entire board back in there, even though it doesn't have a uh, neoprene dust cover, and I'm going to bolt it back in place. You don't need to see that. It's the reverse of what happened when I, when, I put it, take it, when I took it out. So here we go. Hey, everybody. It's Integrator. Welcome back. So uh, this is just a simple test here. I've got the webcam running. Here's Dave's Juno 106 with its newly reconditioned panel board and um, installed and all that. And I'm just going to take a look here. I'm moving faders right now, LFO rate. No problems, no jitter. There'll be that initial jump where you see it actually leap to match what's going on. But other than that, smooth smooth and the PWM doesn't go all the way we've already talked about that I think the guys in SciCraft actually might actually end up changing it so that in fact uh, the PWM doesn't have a full range it's a bit it's, I guess it's a catch-22 if the PWM has the full range in the editor UI then you're not gonna see it sweep the whole way when you do it from the front panel uh, probably I guess okay where it is yeah, we'll see. Okay, these are working. Sub is fine. Noise is fine. The multi-step, yeah, you see the way it jumps like that. That's just part of the, the way that switch works, so that's fine. This is good. And you'll notice there's no jumping or strange spurious behavior. Yeah, this guy is behaving completely perfectly. So far, so good. That was my thumb got the sustain there. All right, and the release, and we are clear, people. We are totally clear. Yeah, we, uh, awesome. So that's 100% success. I would say that we are definitely off to the races here. And as you can see, uh, the process of backing this bank up at this point would actually be pretty straightforward because there are no bulky switches anymore. Yay! So, um, that's fantastic. All right, we'll move on.